Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to this first session of What's New in Thesis 2.0. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into this. We are going to be building this site, the Barking Chihuahua Cafe, and we're going to take it from this default style or the classic thesis style and turn it into something that's totally cool. And we're going to start doing that. I mean, most of the time we're going to spend just actually doing that, but I do want to take a moment just to talk briefly about the different elements of thesis. Okay, when you click on your thesis menu, you come to the thesis site setting screen. And the thesis interface really has two main parts. It has this site setting screen and then it has the skin editor screen. Or what I was calling previously the template editor. But it is the it's the screen that looks like this. But we'll we'll go back to the site setting screen first. In the site settings, you can first set your site-wide settings, that is, those settings that are entirely independent of your skin settings. So when you switch skins from, you know, between different skins, this stuff all stays the same. You have the place where you can select the skin that you want to use, and currently Thesis comes installed with the Thesis Classic skin, which is what we'll be editing today, and the Thesis Blank skin, which is very much that. It's a blank starting place that you'll be able to create a skin from scratch with. So you can select a skin, and you can go to the Skin Editor under Skins. Under boxes, you can select boxes to install. Now, I don't have any boxes uploaded, and I don't actually have a box ready to upload at the moment, so I'm not going to be able to demonstrate that. But when we get to boxes, this is where you'll upload them. And the same thing is true for packages. I'm going to talk about boxes and packages in just a moment. There's a button here to take you over to look at your site, and then there is just information about using Thesis and the support forums and the affiliate program and all that kind of stuff over here. So this is the Thesis setting screen. Now there's some pretty good help in here, so it's definitely worth scrolling down here and taking a look at a quick read at all of this stuff. And we'll talk about the issues that people are having upgrading and installing the helper plugin and all that kind of stuff. We'll talk about that after we're done with uh, setting this skin up. So this is the thesis setting screen and the other screen is the skin editor or the template editor. Now when you click on the skin editor what happens is a canvas pops up which is on a separate pop-up entirely and you might actually find that you have to enable pop-ups for the site because your web browser may be blocking the pop-up so you want to watch that but once it does pop up this is a a canvas that shows you what the changes that you just made here look like now for the purpose of this video it's too big to to have both of these things going at the same time so I'm not going to have the canvas running I'm just gonna go ahead and close it actually but if you've got two monitors and you're working on your design you can have a canvas on one monitor and your skin editor on the other monitor and you'll see the changes that you make in the skin editor immediately reflected in the canvas Okay, the skin editor has three different parts. It has the HTML editor, which is the place essentially where you edit the, the structure of your page templates. It has the CSS editor, where you create the CSS that you are using for styling your HTML. And it has an image library, which is a place where you can add your images that are skin specific images in particular and then and then you can use a relative URL for referencing those images in your CSS and I'm going to demonstrate all that stuff here in just a moment but the HTML editor has this template selector so right now we're looking at the front page and if you click on that you can see the core templates we've got a home template We've got a single template and an attachment template. And then because I've installed the Meteor Slides plugin and it creates a custom post type called Slides, a thesis automatically creates a slides template that you can edit if you wish. There is a page template, and under the page template is a front page template, and then there is your archive templates. And these are all the different kinds of archive templates that you can create. Now, if you create a page template 
and don't change the front page template, then everything you do in the page template will pass through to your child pages in here. So the front page and the 404 page will get exactly the same styling and HTML as your page unless you actually change that. Same thing is true with the single and the archive. So you can create your archive style once and then to the extent that you want a different one for a category, if you come in here and change category, it'll only change the category template, but all the rest of the templates will still get the style of their parent. And then you have the ability to create custom templates over here. The classic skin comes with a landing page custom template, but you can also add as many new custom templates as you could possibly want. And in fact, one of the coolest new features of Thesis 2 is the ability to apply those new custom templates anywhere you want. So if for a moment you come over here and take a look at, let's just take a look at posts and we'll just edit a post. You can see that in your post edit screen you have the ability to choose a custom template. You can choose a custom template for every single post you post. This is something that you are never able to do in Thesis and is something that you're not able to do generally in WordPress, but now you can simply select a custom template you've created and apply it to a specific post. Same thing is true with pages when you've got one of your pages here you could choose to apply your own custom template or a specific custom template to a specific page and that will work fine. You're not going to believe this but it also works in things like categories. Let's say you want all your category templates to be the same except this one in particular. Well this category template you can simply choose a new custom template or a custom template to apply to that category template and now you can have an entirely different template for any specific category, any specific tag. If you've got custom taxonomies that's the same case. Any specific custom taxonomy can have a custom template. It doesn't matter which of those things you want to have a custom template for. You can apply a custom template to absolutely anything. Okay so that's the templates and you can choose when you're creating a template to select one of the templates to copy from as well so if you've got your page and you want to apply it to other things you can when you select the template you want to edit you can select the one you want to copy from and it'll automatically copy all those settings over so it's pretty cool the other thing is that Oh, let's see, let's close this for a second. Close that. Now, this little gear wheel here allows you to open up template wide settings. So, if you've got, well, let's just say you've got some custom landing page here and you want to do some special tracking scripts in that landing page. Anything you put in here, say the head scripts or footer scripts or whatever, anything you do here will apply to every page that has this template, but to no other pages. So if, for example, you want something specific on your front page and you're using the front page template, you can just put that stuff on this page and it'll show up there and no place else. Okay. So that's your HTML editor.